All right, everybody, welcome to our webinar for this month. We're just going to give it another minute to allow people to join before we officially get started. So you can just hang tight for one minute and we will uh, get going shortly. All right, well, again, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. We really appreciate you taking the time to learn uh, some very important skills. Uh, each week or each month, I should say, when we put out uh, these webinars, we wanna make sure that uh, they provide value to the viewers. So uh, we appreciate you being here with us. Uh, today, we're talking about uh, CPR and uh, kind of the first initial steps on how to react when someone suffers sudden cardiac arrest. Obviously, a very, very important skill, something that we're very passionate about here at the Fib Tech. So one quick uh, housekeeping item before we get started. There is a question and answer box uh, on your uh, on your screen. If you have any questions throughout, uh, please make sure you enter them into that uh, into that box and we will definitely answer them all at the end. You know, something that's very important about this webinar is we want to make sure everything that we're talking about is very clear um, so that if you are in a situation um, where you might need to perform CPR, uh, you feel comfortable doing so. So if there's anything that's confusing at all, definitely please ask. Uh, so my name is Mike Papali. I am the manager of community relations here at the Fib Tech. I work on the marketing team. And uh, this is a very personal topic to me because CPR uh, saved my life when I was 17 years old and I suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. If it was not for very, very good CPR for a significant period of time, um, I would have not, uh, I would have not made it uh, the day of my sudden cardiac arrest. So I'm very passionate about the skills we're talking about today. Some some good exciting news here. So we are raffling off a uh, AED cabinet, a Rotate uh, AED cabinet to be specific. So for anybody that sticks around to the end, uh, we're going to randomly select uh, one viewer at the end of the webinar to uh, we, uh, to win a AED cabinet uh, that we will send to them in the mail. Really important note, um, you know, we're gonna be talking about, again, some really important life-saving skills today. Um, I think we're gonna um, provide a lot of valuable information, but this is not an official CPR certification class. So I just wanna make sure um, that everybody understands that we appreciate being here. We think this is obviously very important information, but you're not gonna get a CPR cert certification certificate for attending this webinar. So before we get into it, uh, we always like to kind of just give a brief introduction about the Fib Tech, who we are, what we do, um, and kind of, you know, what our mission is. So um, in short, the Fib Tech is a leader and innovator in the design and manufacture of life-saving resuscitation devices. Um, our medical technology devices provide easy-to-use resuscitation equipment. Um, our uh, products are used by public safety, healthcare providers, and bystanders every single day. Uh, we are owned um, by an international medical device company called Neon Coden. Um, and we are committed to designing and creating products that help communities around the world uh, respond to sudden cardiac arrest. So one thing that we're very passionate about here uh, at the Tech is our mission. And ultimately our mission and um, what we do is we, we are dedicated to increasing survival from sudden cardiac arrest. Um, everything we do every single day comes back to that. Um, our vision at the Fib Tech is to lead explosive growth in the AED usage and transform the pre-hospital treatment of sudden cardiac arrest. Um, again, it's something we take very seriously, and, and our team knows that when they come to work every single day, that they could be having a direct impact on saving somebody's life. So, one topic we want to talk about before we specifically start talking about CPR, it's something that we see uh, a lot in, in the media and conversation. And we just want to clarify the difference between sudden cardiac arrest and a heart attack. Um, they're obviously two conditions that affect the heart, but they're two very different things. And oftentimes we see that the word sudden cardiac arrest, words heart attack, kind of get used interchangeably. So I'm going to start with um, a heart attack. Uh, a heart attack is a plumbing problem with the heart. So if there is a, a blocked artery that prevents blood from reaching the heart, 
um, it could lead to some muscle damage with the heart, and it also could lead to somebody uh, suffering from, you know, the typical heart attack symptoms like uh, shortness of breath, chest pain, uh, chest tightness, heart palpitations, maybe a racing heartbeat, sweating. Uh, some some people get pain in their uh, in their in their back, kind of in their upper back by the shoulder, and these are very common symptoms of a heart attack. Oftentimes, uh, when someone's having a heart attack initially, they're going to be conscious, they're going to be breathing, they're going to be able to talk to you. So someone isn't going to be suddenly just on the ground like they are with sudden cardiac arrest. Um, sudden death is a little less likely with a heart attack than it is with sudden cardiac arrest. But the thing about heart attacks is they can go from very, very mild to where, you know, someone's just having those typical heart attack symptoms and, and uh, not feeling great to very, very severe, where if that blockage goes from a slight blockage, which is restricting some blood flow to a full blockage, heart attacks can actually lead to sudden cardiac arrest. Um, so our advice is if, if you are exhibiting those typical heart attack symptoms, or if you are around somebody exhibiting those heart attack symptoms, um, call EMS, you know, here in the U.S. we call 911, call immediately and, and get that person or get yourself to the hospital and an ambulance as quickly as possible. Um, on the other side of that um, is sudden cardiac arrest. And again, that's the focus of uh, what we're going to be talking about here today. So while a heart attack is a plumbing issue, sudden cardiac arrest is an electrical issue. So um, sudden cardiac arrest occurs very quickly and oftentimes without warning. So there aren't going to be a whole lot of signs or symptoms leading up to the sudden cardiac arrest. Um, when someone goes into sudden cardiac arrest, their heart is going to have a very irregular heartbeat, um, also known as an arrhythmia. Um, and, and when that happens, the heart can no longer pump blood to the brains, uh, the brain, the lungs, and all the other, other vital organs. And, and this is why sudden cardiac arrest is such a time critical emergency. Um, a person is going to lose consciousness and they're going to be completely unresponsive. Um, again, we talked about how when someone's having a heart attack, they might not be feeling great, but they're still going to be able to talk to you. When someone's in sudden cardiac arrest, they will not be able to uh, talk to you at all. They're going to be completely unresponsive and the person's going to be not breathing. And, you know, why this webinar is so important and why these skills are so important is because death can occur within minutes unless treatment is provided immediately following sudden cardiac arrest. So as we know, and like we just talked about, the first moments after sudden cardiac arrest are crucial. And it's very important for lay rescuers, people in the community, to be comfortable stepping up to do something when someone um, goes into cardiac arrest. You know, we have here in the U.S. a great uh, a response time. Our EMS response time is, is really good, but we need something to be done before that ambulance arrives. So just some uh, brief statistics about sudden cardiac arrest. Um, one in every 7.4 deaths across the United States each year is attributed to sudden cardiac arrest. Um, as we know, uh, and, and we're going to talk about immediate CPR, again, why this information is so important, immediate CPR can uh, more than double a victim's chance of surviving. Um, from a corporate work standpoint, uh, 10,000 cardiac arrests occur annually uh, in the U.S. each year. So. Sudden cardiac arrest is an issue that um, it happens um, more than I think people realize. And, and that's why uh, we really need to make sure more people are aware of what to do in those first few minutes after somebody collapses. So we're going to talk about the six links in the chain of survival. And our focus today is going to be on the first three. Um, so the first three, uh, simply put, are call, push, shock. So first, activation of emergency response, right? We always want to get an ambulance, EMS professionals on the way, right? We need to help before they get there, but they are the experts. They're the ones that have way more training than lay rescuers do, and we need to get them there as quickly as possible. So if we witness a sudden cardiac arrest, um, again, here in the U.S., we want to call 911 right away. Uh, the quicker we can activate that emergency response system, uh, the better. Um, next, uh, and, and again, the focus of the class today, of the webinar today, is, is high-quality CPR. Um, if we can perform high-quality CPR within, within seconds of a person collapsing, you know, that can double or triple a person's chances of surviving. And the third link 
um, that we focus on here at Pacific Tech is defibrillation. And that is the quick shot from an AED. And again, statistically, the quicker somebody is shot, the higher the chances are of survival. Um, again, those are the uh, three main focuses for today. But just to cover them, you know, hopefully an AED is deployed before the ambulance arrives. Once the ambulance arrives, um, you know, we hope we get advanced resuscitation. Um, and then post cardiac arrest care, we get them from the ambulance to the hospital and the care of a doctor. And then the sixth link in the chain, which was added um, actually recently, is recovery, right? Because when someone suffers a sudden cardiac arrest, it's both a, a physical and an emotional trauma. And uh, we, we want these, these survivors to be able to leave the hospital and go out and lead uh, long and normal lives following their sudden cardiac arrest. All right, so now we're going to get into the important uh, part of the webinar here. So we're going to talk about uh, kind of the, the, the second that somebody collapsed, what do we do? And I'm going to talk about uh, assessing the scene first. In the next slide, we're going to talk about CPR. And then we're actually going to do a demonstration. So I'm just going to talk through it now. But everything you hear me talking about, you're going to see me demonstrating shortly. Um, so if we witness somebody collapse or if we walk by a room uh, and we see somebody on the ground, uh, the first thing we always want to do is we always want to make sure it's safe for us to enter. We don't want to put ourselves in a situation where we can get hurt. Because if, if we think about it, having two injured people or two people in an emergency situation isn't good, right? So we want to always take a second, look around, check our surroundings, look up. All right, a lot of times people forget to look up. Um, and just, just, just make sure and acknowledge, okay, the scene is now safe for me to enter. Okay, once we do that, now we can step in and help save this person's life. Um, so we've acknowledged the scene is safe. When we do that, we're gonna we're gonna kneel down, and again, you're gonna see me demonstrate this, but we're gonna tap and shout. Uh, we want to see if this person is responsive, and by tapping and shouting, we can see if this person is either uh, gonna give us a physical response to us tapping them on their shoulders, or a verbal response with us yelling um, and asking them if they're okay. Someone in sudden cardiac arrest, again, is completely unresponsive. So when you tap and shout, they are not going to respond to you. Um, next, we want to shout for help, right? If we're in a uh, we're, we're in a setting where there's a lot of people around, that, that's helpful because we have people that now can help us save this person. Um, if we're in a situation, you know, to think of an example, maybe we're at the grocery store and we're in one of the aisles in the grocery store, we're by ourselves and someone collapses. Right? We want to call for help so people from the other aisle next to us come over. And once we call for help and once we have people there, we need to do three things. Uh, we need somebody to call 911 uh, and put the phone on speaker mode so we can hear it as the rescuer. We need someone to go get the AED and bring it back as quickly as possible. And, and we also need somebody to go outside and wave down the ambulance. Um, and I'm just going to kind of briefly talk through those three steps. When we call 911 here in the United States, you're going to get a dispatcher. And they're going to ask you your location. They're going to ask you the emergency. It's very important to be clear that this person is, is unresponsive and not breathing. Because most dispatchers here in the United States, what they'll do is they'll try to assist you over the phone. And as soon as you tell them, you know, this person's not breathing, they're unresponsive, they're going to go into their sudden cardiac arrest profile. And they're going to do everything they can over the phone to help you by um, telling you where to put your hands to CPR, asking you to count out loud telling you if you're going too fast or too slow. And, and they're just going to do everything they can to try to keep you as calm as possible in the situation. Because another thing we have to remember is, if we're not medical professionals, we don't necessarily deal with emergencies like this on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is going to be a very chaotic scene for people around and for us a little bit as well. Um, next, you know, like we talked about, we'll talk a little bit more about the AED after. The quicker we can use an AED, uh, the better, right? The, the quicker the AED is deployed, the quicker it's turned on, the quicker the pads are placed, the higher the chances are for survival. Um, and lastly, you know, sending someone out to wait them, the ambulance, they have, you know, they're on the way, they have the address of where the emergency is, but cardiac arrest is such a time critical emergency. By waving down an ambulance, that can just cut down maybe a minute, maybe two minutes before those, EMF, uh, those EMTs get to the scene. And that could be the difference between someone surviving and not surviving in sudden cardiac arrest. And the last step here when we're assessing the scene is we need to check for breathing. Um, 
we need to see if this person is breathing normally or if they're not. And if they're not breathing normally, uh, we need to start performing CPR. Uh, what's very common uh, in someone that's suffering from sub sudden cardiac arrest, what's called agonal gasping, right? When someone's agonal gasping, their body is, is, is struggling. It's not getting the oxygen that it needs. The blood is not uh, pumping throughout the body. So a person might be making long drawn out breaths. They're almost like a wheezing noise or a cough. Uh, could sound like a snore, a snort, a groan. These are all very common signs of sudden cardiac arrest. And, and this person needs CPR right away. So it's very important to remember when we check for breathing, we are checking to see if a person is breathing completely normally. And if we have doubt, our suggestion is start performing CPR. So now we've, we've checked for breathing. We've determined, okay, the person's unresponsive. They're not breathing. We have the dispatcher um, on the phone. We have someone to go get the AED. We have someone outside waving down an ambulance. Now we need to start performing CPR. And it took me a few minutes to explain that assessing the, uh, the scene slide. Uh, you'll see when I demonstrate it, we want this to happen within like 10 or 15 seconds. If we can start doing chest compressions within 15 seconds of someone collapsing, you know, survival rates can go way up. All right, so CPR still is made up of two steps, um, providing compressions and giving breaths. Uh, today, we are gonna focus on what's called hands-only CPR. And the reason for that is because we can save or help save somebody's life by providing hands-only CPR. So if we're not comfortable giving mouth to mouth, especially if we have a stranger, um, we don't have a barrier device, we're just not comfortable giving breath, we can still help this person. And that's really important to remember. If you aren't comfortable giving breath, you can still uh, help save someone's life by providing what's called hands-only CPR. And that's by doing compressions only. So what does CPR stand for? CPR stands for cardio, cardio pulmonary resuscitation. All right, and what CPR can do is it can help keep blood flow active, right? We talked about sudden cardiac arrest um, and the heart is stopped. So we are not getting any blood uh, flow throughout the body. So by providing chest compressions, we can actually pump the heart um, and, and do the best we can to keep that blood flow active until that AED arrives. So a couple quick notes. Um, we want to do uh, our compressions hard and we want to do them fast. So we're looking at a, a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Um, on an adult, we're pushing down about 2 to 2.4 inches. On a child, we're pressing down about 2 inches. Um, on an infant, instead of using the palm of our hand, we use two fingers in the center of the chest. And again, we're going to get a demonstration, and, and I'm going to show you exactly where to put your hands. Um, a couple things when it comes to performing CPR, it's very important to not be afraid to do something wrong. A lot of times in our, our society, we're afraid to help because we're afraid that we can actually hurt this person or we can make their condition worse. Again, we talked about what sudden cardiac arrest is. When sudden, someone is in sudden cardiac arrest, their heart has stopped. They cannot get worse. So by providing chest compressions, you could potentially break someone's rib, all right? Uh, it doesn't always happen, but it could. You might hear a crack. It could get flimsy in the chest area, but whatever you do, do not think you did something wrong. Again, broken ribs, when a person survives, can heal. But if we stop performing CPR because we're afraid that we're doing something wrong, we're really hurting the person's chance of survival. All right, so now we are going to do a, uh, a demonstration. So we're going to start with uh, we're going to start with assessing the scene, and I just want to show again uh, how quickly that should happen, and then we're going to talk a little bit about CPR. So um, we're yeah, so we're going to uh, Take the presentation off so you can get more of a, a, a full screen mode here. Uh, we have a mannequin here on the ground that we're going to use. Um, so again, for the sake of the camera, I just going to always acknowledge, okay, the scene is safe, right? We always want to acknowledge that. We look around, we look up, the scene is safe. All right, once I do that, I can bend down next to the side of the person, right? The person has collapsed. Um, ideally, they are on their back on a, uh, on a firm, hard surface. That's the ideal position to do CPR. Um, a lot of times we get asked questions of like, well, how do I know if I should move the person? If you do not suspect uh, a, a head or a neck injury, if you didn't witness a person fall, you know, you do need to turn this person on their back to try to be able to perform chest compressions. Because unfortunately, 
you cannot perform chest compression unless this person is on their back. Okay, so I've acknowledged the scene is safe. Okay, I tap and shout, hey, are you okay? Are you okay? Again, someone in sudden cardiac arrest is going to be completely unresponsive. Um, after I do that, I give out my commands. I say, hey, you call 911. All right, you go outside, wave down an ambulance. Uh, you go get the AED and bring it back as quickly as possible. All right, and you saw me pointing, right? You saw me pointing when I was giving these commands. It's very important to take command of the scene. Don't just blurt out, somebody needs to call 911. Someone needs to go get the AED. Someone needs to go outside and wave down the ambulance because it's a very chaotic situation and people are going to be looking around at each other and, and, and be thinking, okay, who's supposed to do it? But instead, you saw me, I took control by pointing. Call 911, go get an AED, go outside, wave down an ambulance. Okay, we've done that. Now we check for breathing. All right, the easiest way to do this is the person's on their back. We want to see if the chest is going up and down. All right, so we look for chest rise. All right, if we don't see chest rise, we assume the person is not breathing. We are checking for five to 10 seconds at the most. We do not want to take a long time making this determination. If we have any doubt, we're going to start performing CPR. So I'm just going to run through those steps very quickly and uh, just kind of see uh, so you can see how uh, fast they need to happen. Okay, the scene is safe. Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? Help, help, I need some help. You call 911. You go get an AED and bring it back as quickly as possible. You go outside, wave down an ambulance. I check for breathing. Person's not breathing. Okay, I'm ready to start doing CPR. And this all happens very, very quickly. Um, again, the quicker we can start doing CPR, the better. All right, so now we're going to talk about um, how to perform chest compressions. Uh, again, we're focusing on hands only CPR. So if you're doing hands only CPR, you start doing chest compressions. You do not stop until an AED arrives or until EMS arrives. And at that point, once the AED arrives, we use it right away. We'll talk about the AED a little more shortly. Um, how do we figure out where to put our hands? Uh, well, there's a couple ways we can do that. We do want to um, you know, be able to bear the chest. Uh, so if we drew a line right, right across the chest from, from one nipple to the other nipple, we put our hand right in the center of the breastbone, okay, that is a perfect location of where we, our first hand should go. Okay, another way we can do it, if you look at someone's chest, all right, even the mannequin has it, it has a notch right here in the chest, all right, if we put our fingers, three fingers right at the top of that notch, all right, right at the top of those three fingers puts you in the perfect location. All right, so we wanna put the palm of one hand, okay, the palm of one hand uh, right in the center of the chest, okay, the other hand is right on top, okay? I wanna be nice and close to the side of this person, right? I wanna be able to push straight down, all right? If I'm far away from them, I'm not gonna be able to push straight down on the chest, okay? So I wanna be knee at the shoulder, knee at the waist, okay? I'm up and off my feet. All right, I have the palm of one hand in the center of the chest. My other hand is locked in top, on top, all right? One thing to notice, look at my elbows. My elbows are completely locked in. Right, if we have, uh, we don't have our elbows locked in, we start using our wrists and we get tired much more quickly. Um, you saw me, I'm leaning up and over the person so I can use my entire body weight, right? I'm not just using my arms, I'm using my entire body weight. And the reason we talk about that is this, naturally you are going to get tired when performing CPR, it is very tiring. The more tired you get, the less, you, uh, the less effective the, com the compressions can become. So our goal is to keep these compressions as effective as possible for as long as possible. All right, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do about 20 to 30 compressions. All right, I'm gonna count out loud, all right, because uh, it helps me keep a beat, it helps me keep a rhythm, make sure I'm going fast enough. It might alert people around me. Uh, if I was giving breath, it would let me know when I hit 30 that it's time for me to give two breaths. It's just a good practice to count out loud. So knee at the shoulder, knee at the waist, okay? Uh, palm of one hand in the center of the chest, interlock my other hand on top, and I'm pressing straight down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 
27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, so that was 30 compressions. Um, if I was giving breath, I would stop there. I would give my breaths, my two breaths, and I would go back to doing compressions. Because I'm not doing giving breath, I'm doing hands-only CPR, I would just do chest compressions. And again, I would not stop until an AED arrives or until that ambulance arrives. Um, so that's pretty much the demonstration on how we perform CPR. Uh, again, the biggest thing to remember is we should not be afraid that we're going to do something wrong. Uh, this person that's in sudden cardiac arrest needs your help. They're very critical. And, and by trying to do chest compressions, you are giving the person uh, a chance to survive. So now we're going to go back to our, uh, our slideshow uh, shortly. Um, and we are going to talk about what comes next. Um, so we've kind of just to recap, we've witnessed a sudden cardiac arrest. We have made sure the scene is safe. We have made sure the person is unresponsive. Uh, we have given the people around us jobs to do. Uh, we have checked for breathing. We have started performing uh, uh, a CPR. Uh, the AED has arrived. I'm going to talk briefly about the AED today. It's not uh, the focal point of this webinar, but two really important things to remember. The AED needs to be used as soon as it arrives. So when the AED arrives, uh, we need to uh, stop performing CPR if necessary, right? If we have a comfortable person that might know how to use the AED, we can keep doing CPR while they set up the AED. But if we have someone that's very scared and doesn't want to use it, we need to stop and we need to turn on that AED and, and, and put the pads on. A um, couple things that we, we really want to uh, make sure people understand here at the Fit Tech. You know, we, we obviously uh, have multiple AEDs as our products, um, but you see it on the screen there. Uh, the most important thing is to, when you get an AED, is to keep calm and then turn it on. Um, as soon as you turn that AED on, it's going to start talking to you. Uh, it's going to give you step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, it's going to tell you exactly what to do. It is not going to move from one step to another step until you have done the previous step correctly. Um, the pads have pictures on them. They show you exactly where they go. And, and another important note is once you put the pads on, they analyze. They determine if a person needs a shock from an AED. And if the person does not have a shock or rhythm, you will not be able to deliver a shock. So we believe we have a big fear still in our society of people being afraid to use AEDs because they don't want to mistakenly shock someone that doesn't need it. And the AED will not allow you to do that. So again, the quicker we can use the AED, the higher the chances of survival. And, and when that AED arrives, keep calm and, and, and turn it on. If it's so that wraps up our uh, CPR demonstration, uh, the information about uh, you know, how, how to uh, assess the scene, how to organize the scene, some brief information on how to use an AED. Um, like we talked about, if you have any questions, you can put them in the box. We'll give it a quick second to let people enter their questions. Um, okay, looks like we just had one come through. Um, this is a good question, and this is something that we've been asked a lot of, you know, how long do I need to perform CPR for? Uh, and it's it's a it's a kind of a tricky question um, in that there's no defined answer. The one thing that we will say is when someone suffers sudden cardiac arrest, uh, again they have an uh, an arrhythmia, they have an irregular heartbeat. So sudden car uh, CPR is so important because it's going to keep blood flow active. It's going to buy time for that AED to get there, hopefully until the ambulance arrives. But CPR alone is not going to change that rhythm. So the answer to how long do I perform CPR for, it really depends on if the AED is accessible. But ultimately, a sudden cardiac arrest victim needs to be shot by uh, an AED in order for them to, to survive. Um, OK, next question. Um, someone asked, do I need to bear the chest to perform CPR? And this is another great question because um, 
you know, statistically right now, uh, there, there are studies that show that uh, female sudden cardiac arrest victims are less likely to receive CPR uh, and a shock from an AED because bystanders are afraid to bear the chest on a woman. And to talk about sudden cardiac arrest, it does not discriminate. It affects um, all ages, all genders, uh, females and males, and the treatment is the exact same. So going back to the question, do you need to bear the chest? Yes, right? That the pads for the AED need to be stuck on bare skin. And as lay rescuers, again, people that are not um, trained and do, we don't do this every single day. It's very important to bear the chest so we have markers of where we need to put our hands. And we want to make sure that we put our hands in the proper location so we can perform high quality CPL. Okay, um, I think that wraps up the, uh, the questions for today. Um, so this is, uh, I guess, the most exciting part of the webinar is we get to uh, announce the winner. Uh, so the winner of the uh, Rotate AED cabinet is Hunter Atkins. So uh, congratulations, Hunter. What we will do is we will get in touch. We will be able to pull your uh, email off the um, registration. So we will get in touch with you and we will uh, let you know how we will get you your cabinet. Cool. So again, um, I just want to thank everybody for taking the time to be here with us today. Again, this is a, a really important information. Although it's not a certification or an official training class, um, the information is valuable. And it's just important that the more people we have out there aware of, of what they need to do when someone uh, suffers sudden cardiac arrest, uh, the more uh, positive impact and lives will be able to help save. So here's some contact information for the FIPTEC. If there's anything we can do to help make your community more heart safe, please reach out to us at any time.